So, for thermomechanical testing, you always have a schematic diagram showing you what parameters are required for the tests. So, this schematic diagram is usually called Earth Deformation Schedule. So, I'll be carrying out deformation at 300 degrees Celsius. But to get to that temperature, I'll be eating up at a rate of five degrees Celsius per second. And then after I reach the target temperature, then I will have to hold for 30 seconds. The essence of holding is to allow temperature distribution across the, tam across the sample to be uniform. Thereafter, then there will be deformation. After this deformation, then I would air cool. But the deformation will be carried out at a particular strain and strain rate. So I want to deform the sample to a strain of one. So don't forget, I said the sample is about 15 mm, and I'm going to deform it to a dimension of 5 mm. I'm talking in terms of the length of the sample now. So to achieve that 5 mm length from initial length of 15 mm, I must have induced a strain of one. And this is being carried out at a strain rate of 0.1 per second. So the strain rate is more or less like the speed of deformation, the speed at which I am deforming the sample. So today is not going to be a very fast speed. So um, it's going to be 0 0.1 per second. So after the deformation, all we need to do is to cool in here. And that will be the end of the experiment. It's going to be a very quick experiment. So now, this diagram here, I'm going to compute it into the QuickSim software, which is the software that Glivu uses. So on the QuickSim software, you have various options. And to explore these options, you need to click on File, you click on New, and you have a table program, but that table program is essentially used for your pocket job, but we have the hydro wedge here. The has as well, it affected zone simulation for welding tests, is also for um, pocket jaw uh, mobile conversion units. When you install the pocket jaw, then you use those two. But for the odd deformation test, which is the hydro wedge test that we'll be carrying out, we use the HDS. And if you click, click on the HDS, a new interface pops up. We are we're not going to use this today. We will use an interface that I had already prepared earlier. So um, let's go back to file, new. And for the script, um, Glibu has a language it understands. And the Glibu language is called the Glibu script language. So it's like you're writing code. Previously, before um, new technology emerged, you need to learn this language to be able to use the Glibu. But today, you have an interface on the desktop where you can just punch in your parameters and you can carry out your test. But for some very complicated tests, you still need to write a bit of code to accommodate those complications in the test parameters. But we are running a very simple um, test today to just demonstrate how the flow stress test is being carried out on the Glibu. So now, what do we do? Like I said, we're not going to use this. We will use this setup that I already had. So um, the first tab you will see here is called the configuration tab. Here, it gives you the opportunity to put in the dimensions of your sample. So, um, so we have you set this as jaw. That's the extensometer where you have the arm view. And here you put in the length of the sample, which is 15 mm, and the diameter of the sample is 10 mm. If you were to carry out plain strain tests, 
Remember when I was doing the thermocouple attachment on the spot welder, I showed you one sample called the plain strength stamp sample. It looks like uh, it looks like a cuboid. Um, if you were to carry out that test, you would select this option and you will be able to put the length, the width, and the height. But today we are only going to be doing the cylindrical sample and that is a uniaxial test. So we are going to use the true axial test. For all the types of tests and the kind of options that you will pick on this QuickScene quick software, all you need to do is to read the Glibo manual and the application notes. Then you get the right um, option for the type of test that you want to carry out. But for today's test, we are doing the um, true axial one because it's an, uni it's a, it's an uni axial compression testing that will be carried out on aluminum. And already we have the length and the diameter. And once you're happy with this, you click on OK. So here you see acquire. The acquire is telling, is telling you to pick the results you want to see during the test. So you are telling the Glebo acquire all this information during the test. So we've acquired stroke, stress, TC1, wedge. We've acquired air ram pressure, the force, um, and quite a bit more power angle, the P ram, the P term, and P wedge. The P ram, the P term means program temperature, the program wedge, and, and the program ram. So um, you acquire all this. If you read the Glebo application notes for flow stress testing, you already have information about what you should be um, acquiring and what you should not acquire. So we've done that. The next thing is we go to setup here. You don't change anything. And you go to a pre. So this is like a pre-treatment before the actual deformation. And to do that, we have said, according to this um, schedule here, we are going to 300 degrees Celsius at this rate. So this is where you are going to put that information. And we are going to hold at this deformation temperature for 30 seconds. So here, what you would do is, we don't have double soak. We are only doing one treatment, and that's why we have first soak. So here, we change this to 300. And here, um, the rate at which the Glebo eats the sample to attain this temperature is five degrees Celsius per second. And that's why we have it here. Actually, that is the recommended eating rate for the ISO-T arm views that you have on the Glebo. So, and we want to hold for 30 seconds. Here we have 120 seconds. So what I'll do here is that I will split that into two. I'll first hold for 15 seconds, and I'll tell you why. So you leave everything the way it is. Um, if you are simulating rolling operation, you may want to increase this to ma many eats. I think you can have up to 20 eats here. If I go to the nest, you will see that we have up to 20 eats. But we really don't need that because it's just forging that we are simulating. And forging is just one stamp. So we go back to pre and reduce these two one because our number of deformation is actually one it's a single eat compression testing that we're carrying out so if you come here then you have the opportunity to set other parameters i'll go back to the pre to show you something here i have soaked for 15 seconds and the diagram is asking me to soak at this temperature for 30 seconds the reason I'm dividing that into two is because when the glib is ready to carry out the deformation, you want it to notify you. And when it notifies you, you want it to soak for like 15 seconds before the actual deformation. And that's why the remaining half of the 30 seconds I'll put here. And I'll put it as 15. So you leave these as zero. What happens here is if I were to 
deform my material at a lower temperature, definitely I would have to change what we have here. And, we, and I will have to put the rate at which the temperature would drop to that temperature. So, but here we are going to have 300 because according to this diagram, once we reach the temperature, we have to hold for 30 seconds. We are first going to hold for 15 seconds, prepare the machine to get ready for deformation and hold for another 15 seconds before the actual deformation. So if I were to preheat at a higher temperature before deforming at a lower temperature, then I need to put a, a rate at which that temperature will drop from the pretreatment temperature to the actual deformation temperature. But in this case, it's a simple experiment whereby we are only going to deform at the pre-heat treatment temperature. So now we have 300 here, and we are saying still remain at 300. And since we are not dropping this temperature, this remains zero. So what really determines what you do here is a function of this diagram. So as a metallurgist, you must understand how to interpret this particular diagram. So now we have our rate set at zero degrees Celsius per second because we are not bringing down the temperature. So we are going to enter from the pre-heat treatment mode to the deformation mode um, at the same temperature. And again, we want to exit at this temperature. The reason I'm exiting at this temperature is that I'm going to cool in here anyway. So I'm not going to ask the glable to control the cooling for me because immediately the experiment is done, I'm just going to ask the glable to shut down such that the sample can cool in here. And that's why this would be my exit temperature. So we need to set the strain rate. And according to the diagram here, it's 0 0.1 per second. So we will change this one to 0 0.1. Again, we want to deform to a strain of one. Remember, I'm reducing from about 15 mm to 5 mm. So the strain I want is one. I can easily punch that in here and press one, and that's it. So the dwell time is the um, time it will stay on the sample before deformation. You don't need to change that. It's always like that. The rate adjust and the compliance adjust are meant to help you adjust your parameters if at the end of the experiment you're not getting your desired results. So for now, you're just going to leave it like that. So we are already done with setting up of all our parameters. Should we be interested in cooling at a particular rate? Maybe we are using a quenching um, accessory, which I didn't show you, uh, but it's possible to attach a quenching accessory to uh, the glibo. We call it quenching tank. Then there you can be able to activate any of this but we're not using that for this experiment because we just want to cool in here. So we're going to uncheck all these boxes and you're not really interested. But if you want to study the effect of cooling rate, then it might be useful for you to check one of these and put your target temperature and the rate at which you want the cooling to be carried out. It's an impressive machine because it does help you control all the different parameters. So, but we're just going to leave it at 300 degrees Celsius, which is the deformation temperature, and uh, we exit at that same temperature because we're cooling in here. So, with this acquisition rate, this is the rate at which it acquires um, the data that you want to obtain from the experiment. So, for, and this depends solely on your strain rate. So if your strain rate is high, the experiment is very fast, very fast. And when it's very fast, you need to increase this acquisition rate so that you can capture enough data. If for very fast experiment, you use low acquisition rates, you will miss so many data points and that won't make your results acceptable. Your results will not make sense. So we are, we are, we are carrying out this test at the strain rate of 0.1 per second as shown here. 
So ideal acquisition rates from experiment will be around 350. So this is from experiment. Um, this is from experience that I've gained using the machine over the years. So now we have the acquisition rate sorted. So we have already put in all these parameters. What I need to do now is to click on save. And if it were to be a complicated experiment, you need to include some code. Then how do you do that? That's why they've given us an option to make scripts. And you can see here, it's more or less the language. So everything you have computed here has changed to the global script, the global script language that the global understands. So um, this is where you can add other complications if you have them. But for me, there's one thing I want to add um, because we are using a wrapper method. Uh, I want to make sure that the thermocouple readings are good enough. So that is what we call the PID term on the global. It's used to compensate for different parameters. So that my thermocouple reading will be quite good. So I'm going to add that code to compensate for the thermocouple reading. And uh, I'm just going to copy and paste. So and the code, these two extra line of codes helps the thermocouple to function quite optimally. And once you're done with that, then you can click save. We are almost ready to run the experiment. However, we need to finalize the setting up on the compression chamber or the global testing chamber. So we're going to go to the global testing chamber to finalize the setup. Then we come back here and run the experiment.